Welcome to Muslim Apologetics Australia. This is my second video I'm doing against Imam Sheikh M. Tawhidi from South Australia. His claim to be a self-claimed cleric, Imam, Sheikh, whatever he is, but he's a fake and a phony and he's recently made a video defending his position that he's not a fake and a phony, which actually proves a really good point. I'm actually happy that he's made this video. And if you ask me why, well, it's simply because the very fact that there is a huge demand from the Muslim population going out and putting pressure on this man to force him to make such a video because it's great most Muslims are condemning this man's behavior and his outrageous statements against Muslims and Islam which is actually great it's great that he's making a video defending the claim that he's not a fake person which proves our point it's great fantastic give yourself a pat on the back to the Muslims in Australia putting great pressure on this man condemning him and also disowning him because he's not our sheikh he's just a fake and a clear phony now it's interesting because the non-muslims are actually coming and commenting on his actual video and you know what the non-muslims are saying it's so absolutely interesting they are saying that this man should be should be believed now the last time i checked no non-Muslim actually supports Muslims, really. I mean, Walid Ali, for example, he's a very secular Muslim. In fact, he has even openly said he supports homosexuality. But what was he called? A closet jihadi. He was called someone that is just making taqiyya about being a peaceful Muslim. Even though Walid Ali spoke against ISIS and against terrorism, and Walid Ali was even threatened by ISIS and the terrorists and gave him death threats, Walid Ali from the project was actually disowned by majority of the Islamophobes and the non-Muslim community, saying that this man is just rubbish, he's just full of taqiyya. So why does it that the standard simply changes when it comes to Imam Sheikh M. Tawhidi? If you go through the comments, you see that Non-Muslims are even saying that Mr. Sheikh Tawhidi is saying the truth. He's right about all of these things, which actually proves the double standards and the hypocrisy. How do we know that Mr. Sheikh Tawhidi is not making taqiyya and just presenting himself as a peaceful Muslim like Walid Ali? Hmm. Notice the double standards. And we need to also remember that the only way you can get infidels to actually support you disbelievers is you need to literally reject your faith now we'll watch this video and you'll clearly see how the man clearly rejects his faith but apparently he's still not making takia so let's have a listen whenever extreme muslims are condemned in the media they turn around and play the innocent card. And in this case, they have called me a fake Muslim Imam or a Sheikh only because I expose their intentions to create a caliphate within Australia. First of all, uh, majority of the people who are actually commenting do not wish to create a khilafat here. Australia doesn't even deserve a khilafat. Most Muslims can't even create a khilafat in the Middle East, yet they're going to try and create a khilafat in Australia. Do you see the nonsense that he's making? See how he's creating disunity between the Muslims and the non-Muslims, and he's trying to promote this hysteria in the public that most Muslims are against Mr. Sheikh Tawhidi because Muslims want to create a khilafa here, which is basically nonsense. I think the only group that I know that is probably trying to create a khilafa here is Hizbut Tahrir, and they're a very small minority uh, um, among the Muslim community. So notice the hysteria he's just plagiarizing and making up because i condemn terrorism i'm considered a fake 
he he's a fake because he can <laughs> condemns terrorism. Uh, um, so we're we're all a fake as well, living in Australia, and we also condemn terrorism. I, you could go ask ninety nine point nine percent of the Muslims in Australia; they also condemn terrorism. So. Are we all a fake as well? Because we all condemn terrorism, just like you, Mr. Sheikh Tawhidi. And notice, again, how do we know that this guy is not making taqiyya, according to the Islamophobes? Because Walid Ali also condemns terrorism, but apparently he's a closet Muslim, he's a jihadi Muslim, and he's not really a peaceful Muslim. So when it comes to Sheikh Tawhidi, he suddenly becomes a innocent Muslim, a free-thinking Muslim, a progressive Muslim, a liberal Muslim, a, well, does he look liberal to you? He's got a beard, he looks like a radical, he's got a thobe on his head. I mean, if this man walked down the street, all the Islamophobes will look at him as a radical. I mean, didn't that other Australian individual do that? Uh, the one that blew up Link Cafe? He shot up a few people. They dress in a similar trance, don't they? Similar phobe, similar thing, going out preaching peace. And then he, he went out into Link Cafe and started shooting people. Mm. And they were apparently both Irani as well. Uh, well, what does that say? So his name was Manharo Monis. We all remember him, folks. Well, he apparently just got killed at Lindt Cafe, and isn't it kind of ironic that the West got rid of Man Harris Monis, right? But then they needed someone else to fill his shoes. Well, you need someone to keep continuing to create hysteria and disunity amongst the Muslim fractions, right? So what did they do? They made this guy dress up <laughs> in a suit and become the new... Harun Mones. But you know what? Everyone loves him. He's not a Takia Muslim. He's a peaceful Muslim. He's not a undercover Muslim. He's a legit Muslim, apparently, to the Islamophobes, because unlike Walid Ali, he's genuine. He's actually promoting peace. Hmm. I wonder if he actually made a statement such as he believes in the Prophet Muhammad. You know, he he believes that the Prophet Muhammad is the greatest role model for the uh, on the face of the earth. I wonder whether they'll still continue to support him or whether they'll then turn on him like Walid Ali and call him a Takia Muslim. It seems that the, he's a Takia Muslim when it suits them, but a non-Takia Muslim when it doesn't suit them. Because I oppose and expose extremism. I'm considered a fake because I filter Islamic texts before accepting them. So he filters Islamic texts before he accepts them. So what does that mean? You filter... Uh, so you believe in one part of it and reject the other part of it? What do you mean by you filtering them? <laughs> what exactly... I mean, can you please define what you mean by filtering? Well, filtering, he will explain it himself what he means by filtering. I'm considered a fake because I respect Queen Elizabeth. Above the land comes above... Uh, so he, he respects Queen mm -hmm. Elizabeth. My question to him would be... Do you actually respect Aisha Radiallahu Anha, the Prophet Muhammad's wife? Do you accept Umar ibn Khattab? Do you accept and respect Abu Bakr Radiallahu Anhu? Um, I'm pretty sure you don't uh, respect them or accept them, but of course you respect and accept Queen Elizabeth. Don't get me wrong, folks. I, as a moderate Muslim, I respect the Queen of England as well. But this man tells us that he respects the Queen of England, but he claims he's a Muslim, but rejects the Prophet Muhammad's wife. He rejects the Khilafahs of Islam, Abu Bakr, the companion of the Prophet. So he would rather respect and lick the butt of Queen Elizabeth, but when it comes to Islam and Muslims, he rejects them. Interesting. Of all laws, I'm considered a fake because I would. So what he basically said that he believes that the Australian law 
uh, overrides Islamic laws, the, the law of God. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine saying that, like, for example, the Australian law says, uh, you know, it's not in the Australian Constitution yet, but for example, in the Australian Constitution, we'll probably have gay marriage legislation being accepted. So basically, what he he's saying is that he. He respects and accepts a law that supports homosexuality. Um, and if, if Islam denounces homosexuality, he basically will support the Australian law that favours homosexuality over Islamic law. So if this person is not an infidel, a kafir and an apostate, I don't know what is. Yes, we accept Australian laws. We respect them. Uh, but of course, we don't say that they are better or over Islamic laws. We do not say that. And this is why he is a murtad, an apostate. He's just clear words of disbelief. But then he tries to appeal to the Muslims to show that, no, it's just a joke that he's a fake Muslim. Would die for Australia. I'm considered a fake because I live by the Australian Constitution. I'm considered a fake because I glorify the Australian flag. Um, I've actually got an Australian flag at home. So, I mean, glorifying an Australian flag, most Muslims, even at school, preschool, we all sing the Australian anthem and, the, and we salute the Australian flag. So, how exactly... So we're a fake as a Muslim community in Australia. Apparently, we're also majority of us who actually accept this. Uh, I mean, I can't. I can't really think of any Muslims walking out from an Australian anthem except a few young boys in Sydney. Wow, that must speak for the general Muslim population. <laughs> I'm considered a fake because I believe all departed Australian soldiers are martyrs in the eyes of God and in heaven. Did you hear that, folks? He says that he believes that all Australian soldiers who die fighting, killing Muslims overseas, die as martyrs and will be in heaven. These are Christians, right? Christians, even atheists. They consist of Christians and atheists. I mean, not even the Christians would say things like that, even about Muslims. I mean, Mr. Sheikh Tawhidi, do you think that a Christian that you're sucking up to, such as Pauline Hanson, for example, do you believe that she thinks that if you die as a martyr, you will go into Christian paradise? Really? You really believe that? <laughs> right? They will tell you that unless you believe in the blood and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have no salvation. So even the Christians are laughing at your statement. Right? So, again, this person is a hypocrite. Allah says clearly in the Quran that whoever accepts a religion other than Islam, it will never be accepted of him. So if a Christian goes and dies in a good deed, apparently, let's say he's going to fight terrorism, which is great, no problem, go and kill the terrorists, fine. But to go to the extent to say that when he dies, he enters the Muslim heaven, that clearly goes against the Quranic instruction where there is no salvation and safety for disbelievers as such. And notice early in the beginning of the video, he said he filters the Quran. Is this basically the verse that you filter out? Do you filter out the verse where Allah says no other religion will be accepted except for Islam in the hereafter? So Mr. Fake Sheikh Tawhidi, when Muslims are calling you fake, it's not simply because you condemn terrorism. 
I mean, we condemn terrorism too, but you want to make it sound like it's just about terrorism. We call you fake because you are a liar and you misinterpret, filter out and reject verses of the Quran which give no salvation to Christians. Yet you promote the salvation of Christians because, of course, you are a Rafideh and you're probably an, uh, not even a Shia. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what you are really. You're probably presenting yourself even as a Shia. I mean, I, I'm not too sure whether even Shias believe that Christians will be saved. I mean, I think if we ask the experts of the Shia field, they probably will reject your notion as well. But it's just incredible. You would say such a thing and then accuse the Muslims for calling you a fake, for rejecting the very verse of the Quran. And in fact, even the Islamophobes don't even believe you, the people who you suck up to, because those Islamophobes will come and tell you that there is no salvation for Christians in the Quran. There is no salvation uh, uh, that, that infidels will be going to hellfire and so forth. So these same Islamophobes that you support, these same non-Muslims that you support, are actually laughing at you when you're trying to promote such a distorted view of Christians in the Quran. And make no mistake, folks, this man has been designed and promoted by the West and the media. And it's nothing new. I mean, we're, we're actually, it just feels like we're just used to it as Muslims when puppets like this just arise out of nowhere. I mean, people like Majid Nawaz. Majid Nawaz is promoted as a secular think tank and a reformist Muslim. He was trying to promote a new version of Islam up until where he got caught with hookers at a strip club, right? And the guy came out public and said, oh, I'm just not a devout Muslim anymore, so don't look mm -hmm. up to me as some example. I'm just not that example. I'm not really religious myself. But you know what? If he didn't get caught in a hooker club, in a strip club, he would have still presented himself as a religious figure that everyone else should look up to him until Allah exposes them. So Majid Nawaz is spoken about all the time throughout the whole secular world, throughout the whole secular think tanks, trying to promote this uh, Islam that is being reformed. It needs to be reformed. This is what they're promoting. And what they're actually promoting is not that the Quran has to be now newly interpreted no they're trying to remove verses of the quran just like sheikh tawhidi he when he says he wants to filter the quran he's basically trying to say that this verse is nullified it does not exist it shouldn't exist and it's not there it's not for our period of time he rejects the verses of the quran for example when uh, allah says that the christians will not be saved he rejects that. And that's exactly what people like Majid Nawaz want to do. They don't want to reform your Islam. No, 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 no. Uh, they basically want to completely change your Islam. Okay? See, I wouldn't have a problem if these people came out and said, we want to restore your Islam. Instead of reformation, we want to put restoration. Restoration simply means to come back to its true teachings. The teachings of the scholars that do not promote to kill innocent people, non-enemy combatants. And we see terrorist groups doing this. See, they don't come, people like Majid Nawaz or people like this Sheikh Tawi, they don't say, look, these terrorist groups are misinterpreting the Quran. You see, if, if, they, if they said they are misinterpreting the Quran, that would be great. But they don't say that. They say that this is what the Quran teaches. And this is what the extremists use. They use the Quran to promote their killings and so forth. So they want to come out and filter it. Instead of doing that, they should come out plainly and say, we want to restore the true meaning. The meaning of the verse of the Quran do not mean to kill. And the verses are taken out of context. If they promoted such an Islam, we wouldn't reject them. But what they promote is to try and change Islam. And this has been happening for the last 20, 30 years heavily. I mean, they can't beat Islam. You need to understand that the non-Muslims cannot beat Islam. The only thing that they have left is 
that they need to change it. That's what they did with the Bible. They changed the verses of the Bible and they tried to claim that the verses of the Bible cannot be implemented today. They are metaphorical. They are only for a period of time and it's not for our time. So therefore, those ancient laws remain ancient. We need to adapt and adopt secularism to Caesar be Caesar, as they say. Yet it's interesting because even though Christian organizations do that, when secular think tanks build abortion clinics and murder babies, then suddenly the Christians come out and say, oh, look, we want our biblical laws back. You see? So please do not allow that to happen with Islam. This is exactly their objective. Their objective is to change Islam. And they use these little think tanks, these puppets such as and Tawhidi and people like, say, Majid Nawaz or that other infidel kafir named Rita Panahi, uh, who speaks on the seven, uh, sorry, the six nine three three AW afternoon program with Tom Elliott. Let's continue. I'm considered a fake because I reject Sharia law and live by the Australian law. So notice, this is why we call him a fake Muslim. See, you don't need to say, I reject Sharia law and I live by the Australian law. See, I could say, I accept Sharia law. I accept the laws of Sharia. That's fine. But there is a place and time to practice Sharia law. I can't practice all of the laws of Sharia law in this country. So, of course, I'm going to uh, stick with Australian law and because that was the treaty I made. I made that treaty to accept the Australian law. Because I live here, obviously I can't force Sharia on, on, on these people. So, but I mean, I could say I understand Sharia law, I love Sharia law, I believe in Sharia law, but fine, that, play, that Sharia law has a time and place. So if a Sharia law does exist in another Muslim country, I could choose to leave Australia and go live under Sharia law. It's always in my heart. I respect it. But when you say, I reject Sharia law, Sharia law basically means Allah's law. That's basically what it means. If you remove the word Sharia, it basically means Allah's law. So when you say, I reject Allah's law and I accept Australian law, now you must understand that these Muslims aren't against you because... You're simply against terrorism, but you're simply, I mean, most Muslims are against terrorism, but you're simply saying things that are rejecting the fundamentals of Islam. And this is why people are calling you a, you a fake. I mean, we don't have to go into great detail into this, but you are a Rafideh, an Irani Rafideh Shia, right? One of the worst types of Shias. I mean, there are different. I'm not speaking for all Shias. There are good Shias, but the Rafidi are one of the most worst. They curse Allah. They curse the Prophet. They curse his companions. They say Imam Ali is God, and they say all of these horrendous things. So you are, you're not even considered a Muslim. I mean, forget about being fake. You're not even considered one. So don't don't get, <laughs> um, you know, don't feel offended when we say that. It, it's a collective things that you say that is the reason why we call you a fake. I'm considered a fake because I am an Australian Muslim and not a Muslim Australian. I'm you know, doesn't that sound like the Islamophobic rant? Uh, Islamophobes would often come up to us and say, oh, how come you don't consider yourself Australian first? Why Islam second? Uh, sorry, why Islam first and why Australia second? I mean, do you understand the division he's trying to cause now, right? I mean, okay, so let me ask Imam Sheikh Tawheed the question. Why can't you consider yourself Muslim first and Australian second? What pressure pressures you to say that you're uh, um, Australian first and Muslim second. What pressures you? I'll tell you what pressures you. You are an infidel, a kafir, and your only aim is to please the kuffar before Allah. Okay? That is your whole aim. See, we Muslims, it doesn't... 
it doesn't make a difference really for us to say Australian and Muslim first and so forth. But what is wrong? What is wrong with saying you're Muslim first? You're Muslim first. What is wrong with that? Uh, it's interesting because even the Islamophobes do not even consider you Australian. <laughs> you're still Arab and an Irani, right? If you went up to an Australian and said, I'm Australian first, they're going to really laugh at you. Because even if you're trying to simulate to them, they're still not going to accept you. They're still always going to look at you as an Irani first. Aren't you? Well, you are Irani first because you don't have any Australian blood in you. You were imported from Iran. So really, you're Irani. It doesn't mean you're just simply now an Australian and an Australian first, they're still going to look at you as an Irani first and an Australian second. But it's interesting because you're too shameful, you're too shameful to call yourself a Muslim first and a Muslim, a Muslim, uh, well, you're too ashamed to call yourself a Muslim first and, and an Irani second. Or you're too ashamed to call yourself a Muslim first and an Australian second. Why are you ashamed of that? Well, I'll tell you why you're ashamed of it. Because the kuffar has made you ashamed of your religion. That is exactly why you're doing that. You are ashamed of your religion. You can't put Islam first. There is no way you could ever put Islam first. Infidels, kafirs, and hypocrites can never put Allah first in their in, in, in their daily affairs. You need to understand that and comprehend that. Everything else will come second. Islam for you will come second. In fact, it will probably come third or fourth or fifth in your life. It will never come first because a hypocrite cannot stand to have Islam in first position. He cannot have it. This cannot happen and thank you You're, you've proved our point i mean what is the difference if i say i'm a muslim first and yes i respect the australian laws second what is wrong with that is there any anything wrong with that yes i'm a muslim because that's something that i value something that i cherish more than anything else and i wouldn't let anyone take that away from me but you see a hypocrite an infidel has allowed that essence and spirit of Islam ripped and taken away from him. And that's why he's become an infidel and a kafir. You know, it's even interesting in the uh, Constitution, even in the Australian Constitution, we have something called the Lord's Prayer. The beginning of the Australian law, it starts by the beginning of the uh, the lord's prayer doesn't it so the lord's prayer comes first before the commencing of the political system in australia so when you denounce islam and say islam comes second and the australian constitution comes first right even the islamophobes are laughing at you because they've made you accept islam second yet in their own constitution they accept christianity at first place they say in the in in the name of the lord be done thy kingdom come that happens at the beginning of the the the, the constitution before the be commencing of the parliament seatings and before the speakers can actually speak that's the lord's prayer that they actually read out i know what some islamophobes are going to say oh he's going to say oh but there's still a separation between church and state that's yeah that's pretty artificial and rubbish at the same time because l australian moral laws stem from judo judo christian biblical laws the ten commandments they're part of our moral system i believe religion was sent to serve humanity and humanity does not serve the religion i'm considered a fake because i have uh, did you hear that? Humanity does not serve the religion. Yet he sits there and he's saying that he serves the religion. He does uh, free marriage councils, free marriage celebrant, uh, community work. He does all of that, but then he says religion didn't, uh, sorry, human beings didn't come to serve religion. Listen to the hypocrisy. I have Jewish friends and 
Christians too. I'm considered a fake because I... He's, he's a fake because he has Christian friends and Jewish friends. Actually, Allah says in the Quran, do not take the Jews and the Christians as your awliya, as your friends. Oh, of course, he will filter that verse out, right? He'll reject that verse as well. And of course, we know what friends mean. We know what friends mean, okay? When the Quran says friends, it means close companions. Do not take them as close companions. Yes, I can still respect the Jews and the Christians, say hello to them in the street. They're, they're my work colleagues. You know, maybe go and sit and have a coffee with them and so forth. There's nothing wrong with that. But when Allah says, do not take them as friends, it means close companionship. Okay? Because they will misguide you. They say in the English definition what your friends are they're not going to remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you hang out with them for too long right they're probably going to call you into their own morality and destruction but that's the point right this person clearly rejects the verses of the Quran he clearly rejects them. In fact, an Islamophobe will laugh at this guy. He'll say, look, your Quran says, do not take the Jews and the Christians and friends. And they'll laugh at this imam. But suddenly this imam, the Islamophobes say that this imam is speaking the truth. He's, all, he's right. He's not a Taqiyya Muslim. He's a peaceful Muslim. I, <laughs> to me, that I find that really bizarre that they would say that. Because the Islamophobes... Uh, that he supports, the non-Muslims that he supports, and to be on their side, they in fact criticize him and say, your Quran actually teaches that Jews and Christians are not to be taken as friends. So where are these Pauline Hansen supporters to pounce on this man's back and say, you're a hypocrite and you're a fake Muslim, just like the rest of us Muslims? Where are they? Where are they to comment in his posts? They're not even commenting on his posts. Amazing. You know, interesting, the non-Muslims, do you think they take us as friends? Really? Do you think they take us as friends, right? They only take us as friends if we completely leave our religion and adopt secularism. That's why the Iftar party, we all remember that, the Iftar party with Turnbull, yeah, uh, who was invited? Walid Ali, who supports homosexuality, he was invited, but apparently he was still a closet jihadi, according to some Islamophobes. And who else was invited? Sheikh Shadi. Sheikh Shadi had some disagreements and he promoted Sharia law. He wasn't trying to enforce it in Australia, but because the man had different views and different opinions, the Australian public condemns such an iftar party that such a muslim cannot be a friend of turnbull and be invited to such a dinner so notice the islamophobes they set their standards they set it they know who their friends are and who who not their friends are but when it comes to muslims apparently muslims can take jews and christians to be their friends yes muslims have to accept them as their friends but the kafir the non-muslims no 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 you cannot be their friend unless you accept and bow down to all of their ways you see that you see the hypocrisy here but of course I can understand some of the non-Muslims why they're accepting this man because as Allah says in the Quran, the Jews and the Christians will never accept you unless you become a kafir, just like them. So that's why he's accepted now in their circles. The non-Muslims are probably accepting this man. You'll see in the comments they're accepting him. They're saying, oh, he's a good man. He's speaking the truth. He's ex they're accepting him. And it's good because when we know that he's being accepted amongst them, it shows that he's actually leaving Islam. He's leaving Islam, right? Because as Allah says in the Quran, the only way they will accept you is if you become an infidel like them. Don't charge $1,500 for a marriage contract. So basically he said he doesn't charge, he's not a fake um, Muslim because he doesn't charge $1,500 uh, for a marriage celebrity contract. Uh, so what? You work for free, do you? You work completely for free. You sit in that office and work completely free. 
Is that, is, is that what you're saying? You don't charge anyone any money. You basically, that's what you do. That's, that's basically your job. You sit there, lead the prayer, and you sit in that room, and you don't charge any fees. Is that what you're telling us? Really? Or for a divorce, and I do everything for free? I'm considered a fake because I reject all Islamic governments and Islamic caliphates. I'm considered a fake because I believe God sent religions to guide people, not to rule upon them by the sword. I'm considered a fake because I want an Islam with the West. I'm considered a fake because I have left certain unacceptable Muslim practices and self-harming rituals. So notice he is a Muslim if he wants Islam, he's, if he wants Islam compatible with the West. So basically his Islam has to be politically correct according to Western mm -hmm. standards. <laughs> now, now notice, so if the Quran says homosexuals are wrong and if the West says homosexual, the act of homosexuality is right. We have to accept homosexuality. This is what he means by the Quran and Islam has to be compatible with the West. Why can't we live amongst the West with our differences? Isn't that part of compatibility to accept diversity? Notice the Islamophobes he sucks up to, the non-Muslims, do not want anything with Islam in the West. Anything Islam, they don't want it in the West. So uh, Pauline Hanson, for example, she wants all of you Muslims out of Australia, including you, Mr. Tawhidi, because you're a Muslim. She wants you out of Australia too. So the compatible Islam that you even promote in the West is not even accepted. Donald Trump, did he favor the moderates over the radicals? No. When Donald Trump says no more Muslims migrating to America, I'm stopping all the visas, he did not show any compassion or mercy to even the moderates. Right? So you're all in the same boat. When you're sucking up to the West and saying, oh, you're trying to promote this moderate part of Islam, which I agree with, that I'm, I'm okay with in aspects of, you know, uh, not waging war against the infidels and terrorism and all that sort of stuff. I, I totally agree with you. But even when you're trying to promote the washdown version of Islam on all the other aspects that you're, that you're promoting, you're still not accepted. <laughs> Your Islam is still not accepted here unless you completely give it up. Unless you completely give it up, which you are actually on your way of doing. Because I don't agree with such a Muslim upbringing. I'm considered fake because I refuse to conduct marriage contracts for underage children. Now, this is another lie. You know, this guy is clearly running on a Zionist agenda. I mean, come on, like... Who is making this guy talk and speak the things that he is? I can't even think of any Muslim friends that I even know who get married to underage women. I mean, if he's the only married celebrant that cancels underage marriages, I'm pretty sure there will be a lot who accept it. So where are all these underage marriages to 13, 14, 12-year-olds, 9-year-olds? Where are all of these girls? Please bring them. <laughs> right? So it's, again, this hysteria, this lie that he's promoting. He's trying to create confusion as if it is something embedded in the Muslims that they're trying to preach and put forward into Australian culture. Right? You may find one Sydney man who has been caught with an underage girl or here and there single cases, minority views, but of course he wants to show it like it's an epidemic problem and he needs to come here and reform all the Muslims of Australia because all of these young girls are running around Australia who are barely legal girls married to all these older men.
<laughs> you know, interesting, uh, in America, paper was uh, just recently came out, uh, according to the Washington Post, according to um, Independent UK, that 12-year-old marriages as marriages are still accepted in America. <laughs> I mean, does he even condemn the American law? Hmm, interesting. Which is becoming the encouraged norm within the Muslim society. Where is the encouragement of norm in the Muslim society? <laughs> Please, show me five Muslims, count them on your hands, who practice child marriages in Australia. And he speaks of it being a norm. <laughs> in the Australian community, in the uh, norm in the Australian community. I mean, this guy is absolutely ridiculous and spewing rubbish. I'm considered a fake because I reject the idea of genital mutilation. A fake genital mutilation? I asked the Pakistani community if they knew anything about genital mutilation. Most of them were even shocked that I even asked them such a question. They said they didn't even know about it. The Turkish community, the Muslim community, they don't know anything about the genital... They, they, the first time they heard about genital mutilation is from Western journalists, right? They don't even know that. So how do you say you're against genital mutilation? We Muslims are against genital mutilation in Australia. And when I say we, I'm talking that the vast majority are against it. You will not find a hand full of Muslims who support genital mutilation. In fact, it's a cultural practice. So notice all of the points he's raising, you know, homo, uh, child marriages, uh, genital mutilation. These are the same words of Ayan Ali Hirsi. These are the same words of Rita Pin Penahi. These are the same words of Majid Nawaz. It's not new. You see, they're following the same tone of rhetoric. Genital mutilation, terrorism, uh, uh, child marriages, uh, stoning adulteresses. All of these things you will see are all the same rhetoric running in the Islamophobic media as if Muslims are digging up holes, stoning backyards. I mean, have you ever heard of a criminal report where a Muslim was convicted of trying to stone his wife in the backyard because he found her being unfaithful to him? <laughs> I mean, with stones hanging all over her forehead. Have you seen that in the news? Right, But he wants to talk about Sharia law being implemented in Australia and he's trying to impose it. <laughs> I'm considered fake because I am against stoning. <laughs> I'm considered fake because I want to reform the religion with him. <laughs> I'm considered fake because I have woken up before it's too late. I'm considered fake because I am a free thinker. I'm considered no, you're not a free thinker, sir. I can tell you right now that there are think tanks behind you pushing their agenda through using you as their mouthpiece. It's fake because I use the brain God gave me, something that is frowned upon by most clergymen. <laughs> I'm considered a fake because they know I am right. And it doesn't serve their agendas at all. <laughs> I'm considered a fake because until now, none of them have the ability or courage to debate me. On <laughs> debate you. <laughs> Please, I will make a challenge to you right now. Me, I will make you a challenge right now. Mustafa Shaheen makes a challenge to you to debate me in Melbourne, Australia, You've got my email address. I'll send you my email address. In fact, put drop a comment below my video and accept a challenge to debate me because I would love to debate you in a live debate. On what I state and believe in, <laughs> I'm considered a fake because I didn't accept their $3 million bribe to stay silent. Now we know that this guy is clearly lying. Please show us a documentation where a dollar offer was given to you to stay quiet. Please give us a single detail, evidence, substantial evidence of that claim. In fact, 
I'm pretty sure you don't need to accept bribes. You've already sold your religion. You've probably accepted millions of dollars from Australian organizations, secular think tank organizations, to use you as a mouthpiece. Anyway, you're you're clearly being paid a paid agent. Uh, but you know this is to promote more of his lies. And of course, an Islamophobe will look at this and say he's telling the truth. Look at him, he's telling the truth. Yet, if he was a Sunni Muslim, they'd say he's making taqiyya, right? If it was Walid Ali, they'd say he's making taqiyya. Yet, Shiism believe in taqiyya. Mm, but taqiyya there, no, apparently he's telling the truth now. <coughs> yeah. I'm considered a fake because for them, I'm too Australian. There were plenty of careers that I could have chosen in my life. But I chose to become the person I am today. No, you chose the best career to make lots of money. Trust me, being Islamophobic and being against Islam makes millions of dollars in your pocket. It's one of the best bookseller. So trust me, you chose the best career path to sell your religion, gain lots of money and end up in hellfire. To give back to Australia. The bottom line is, I want Australia to stay Australian. Yes, you want Australia to stay exactly the way Pauline Hanson wants it to be. And you're probably funded by Pauline Hanson.